All right, so here's the deal. Um, I go to Paul's house this morning to pick him up like I usually do on Saturday mornings. And it usually takes him a few minutes to come outside or whatever. So I'm sitting there waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And all of a sudden, I just don't notice it's taking an inordinate amount of time for him to come outside. I'm like, what's going on? So I send him a text message. Hey, man, you there? I call him. Nothing. I go up to his house. I go up to his door. Knock on his door. Nothing. So I leave and I say, listen, I'm, Tim Hortons is like five minutes away from his house. So I said, listen, I'll be at Tim Hortons when you wake up. I was only going to wait like another 10 minutes and then you guys were going to just have all me this week. So I go, uh, he gives me a call while I'm there. And, uh, all right, go ahead. Damn, that lady's nuts. He gives me a call. He goes, dude, man, I'm sorry. I slept in and my son woke me up and all this other stuff. I was like, okay. He's like, I'll be there in two minutes. I go, nah, forget it, man. I'll pick you up. He goes, well, dude, come get me then. Hey, I was already at Tim Hortons. I might as well pick up everything. So I got him a Boston cream donut. Can't wait till he opens this thing up and just bites it. And then he's just, but he's just, he's just unbelievably full of venom for the rest of the episodes today. What are you doing? He's recording me for some reason. And I don't know why. Very weird. Well, good morning, sunshine. Good morning. Look at this sexy thing. <laughs> What's up? How do you like the new studio? I like it. I like it. It's all fancy and stuff. Am I even allowed to have a donut in this place? I can't eat a donut in this thing. I am. It's your car. Aren't you hungry? Yeah, yeah I'll, get to, I'll get to my donut. Today. I'll get to my donut. Don't worry about it. I'll get to my donut. Usually eat it by now because yeah, I'm usually long winded at this point. Yeah, I know. It doesn't I understand matter. that being being a, a, an argument where you're going to say, "Okay, they beat the Patriots." You're a marv. <laughs> There's Bavaria cream. What I do to deserve this? Damn it! All right, so before we get into this whole debate, um, pause the video. If you're going to trade for AJ Green, right? Let's say Cincinnati's looking for offers. They're going to take the best offer from the Bills. What's your best offer, right? You go to them. They come back. It's back and forth. They say, nope, I need more. Imagine it like an episode of Pawn Stars. You're going back and forth. You're like, okay, no, final offer. What's your best offer? So pause the video right now. Drop that in the comments section, and then let's see where this crazy train ends up. Choo-choo. Don't forget to hit. Ah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. So Jordan Sitakowski. Nailed it. Of course. Hashtag Q&A. Predisposed to nail that. I heard a rumor. Room your, room your. Is it French? You, is spelled the French way. Is spelled the French. Jordan Sinikowski confusing us all with his French grammar. <laughs> French Canadian? I heard the rumor. Room your. You close to, are you close to Montreal? Montreal? Are you close to that border? Are you in Watertown? Love Montreal. Um, in the Thousand Islands? Um, I heard a rumor about the Buffalo Bills possibly trading for AJ Green. Is that possible? And would he be a good fit in Buffalo? And would you guys like that move? And what are the chances of it actually happening? Please keep the content coming, guys. Really enjoy your guys' chemistry together. We get chemistry. You know, you know, I always thought of it as an Abbott and Costello, where I'm the lunatic and you're the straight man. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. again, you play the lunatic quite well. Yeah. Uh, again, I it. Listen, guys, we're just a couple of we're just a couple of dudes talking Buffalo Bills football yeah. and just driving around. So, yeah. I will say this though. What? I think the chemistry part comes in. We know when the one's being the lunatic and the other one has to be the straight man. That's true. That's what the chemistry is. Yeah, I think so. Ninety nine percent of the time, I'm the lunatic. It's pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell. So you're telling me. <laughs> And then you do these awful oh, okay. Joe, Joe Pesci impersonations. It's Marlon Brando for the last freaking time. <laughs> I try to tell you this, you never listen to me. 
It's Dom DeLuise. It's and he, not Dom DeLuise. It's just Dom DeLuise. I hate you with a passion it's, of a it's, thousand this suns. Is, this is Robin Hood Men in Tights, Dom DeLuise, doing Marlon Brando. It is not. With the cotton balls. He's got the lizard. <laughs> <laughs> the awful <laughs> thing is The lizard he, peas on his head. My he best impression, you say, it was the one where Ben Stiller's a fat guy in dodgeball. <laughs> That's true. That's your best impression. <laughs> White Goodman. White Goodman. I won that tournament. <laughs> it's so Chuck spot on. Norris. <laughs> it's so spot on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I think a little bit of this is preseason fever. Yes. Right? Where you start looking for things that might fit. And the Bills have plenty of cap space. Like, from a cap perspective, this is no big deal. Right? They can absorb they, pretty much anything. They had 21. They yeah. had 21. Green is 15. Right. Um, but... <clears throat> the same reason, like I got a few, I got a few different directions I want to take this in. Sure. The initial direction is from the fi- financial business standpoint. Um, he's fifteen million this year. He's on the last year of his deal. Right. So that's all. That's the, the same questions we have about him is what we had about Clowney. Could mm-hmm. you resign him? He's going to be thirty-one this year. Right. Uh, he's got. I think he's got like six hundred catches. Yeah. He missed uh, nine games last year, I believe. Yeah. No, uh, he either played or missed. I was doing. I was looking up the stats yesterday. I'll pull it up. I'll try and confirm. Um, th- uh, but that, that being said, uh, he is an intriguing piece that you would have on your, uh, on your offense. The, the interesting part about it is, and I'm not comparing these guys right now, but I'm just saying from a physicality standpoint, build, speed, and everything. Stills is the same body type, I'm saying, as Green. Okay. So if you sign Sills, that could tell you two things. Number one, they already have that, or they, mm-hmm. they believe they have that type of player, like mm-hmm. his type of like body type, route running, and anything like that. Or because they were intrigued by Sills, they'd be intrigued by Green. Wait, wait, wait. David Sills? Yeah. David Sills is 6'4? 6'3. I didn't realize he was that tall. Yeah. Come on. They're both six. It, Green is 6'4", 210. Yeah. Sills is 6'3", 210. They're the same, like, lanky, I'm going to knife through the defense type route runners. I didn't realize that Sills yes. was that tall. He is very tall. But the other intriguing thing is, and I don't know if I should leave it for you because this is your wheelhouse, but new head coach. You got a quarterback that's going to be 33 next year when his deal's up. Next year, 2020 season, mm-hmm. Andy Dalton. <clears throat> Zach Taylor, the head coach, was the wide receivers coach for the Rams and then a quarterback coach. He was instrumental in developing Cooper Cup, Reynolds, those right. guys. Yeah. So he could work with young receivers that people don't know who they are. Right. So that would be, okay, we'd be willing to let Green go. Now, by all accounts, the Jonah Williams injury, yeah, that's a big one, right? That's a huge one because you start to think about it. The Bengals weren't expected to really make a lot of noise this year anyway. They're currently $19 million underneath the cap. Right. You get rid of Green and Dalton, which I know is huge. Yeah. You get rid of Green and Dalton, um, you free up another $31 million. So you get $50 million prior to the next league, st- league season starting. Right. Free agency hits, and you'll have a high draft pick. Right. Well, well, the other thing I want to say real quick. Sure. They drafted a quarterback in the fourth round. They did, yeah. Who Ryan Finley. Is very intriguing. Yeah. Finley, well, comes from NC State, yeah. right? So we talked about NC State a lot on this Yeah. On this show recently. <laughs> yeah, we had. But the thing, real quick before you get to your point. This is the rabbit hole that we go down when, we, when you guys sure. ask us these questions. Sure. Like, we got to... You asked us about AJ Green, we got to Ryan Finley. We're yeah. crying out loud. You know yeah. what I mean? So... Is it a possibility? Can I actually answer the question? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think so. It's yeah. always a possibility. I, I, right. Anything's a possibility. But, I mean, you take a look at what they've tried to do, and um, they've been trying to find a compliment to A.J. Green for a while, right? Yes. And A.J. Green did only play nine games last year, and without him, the offense did sputter. But you really saw Tyler Boyd take that big leap forward, he right? Did. Now, the question is, is Tyler Boyd in number one? I mean, I don't really put him in that category, although he played really well. Yeah. Tyler Boyd needs some help, right? It's not like they haven't tried. They tried with uh, John Ross, 
It is veiled, mm-hmm. right? John Ross is a big swing and miss right now. But the one, and this is going to go back a ways. We, I don't even know if we were doing the podcast at this point. Oh, we were doing the po- we were doing YouTube at this point. Yes. There was a quarterback who I adored that came out of the draft a couple of years ago. And he went, I think he went undrafted. Or he might have gone late. I think, no, he did go late. He went late to uh, the Cowboys. And it was Jeff Driscoll. I was like, this guy's a steal. It was LA Tech. I was like, this guy's going to be a steal of draft. Tall guy. Works through progressions pretty well. I was like, there's a lot of things to like about him. He's a project, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a lot to like about him. He's the backup quarterback in Cincinnati. So you're going to ask me, can they get rid of Andy Dalton? I'm going to say, Jeff Driscoll's there. Go ahead. Go ahead, right? Um, Jeff Driscoll. Yeah, Jeff Driscoll. But it's... I got to be honest with you. Is it a possibility? I I suppose it is a possibility, right? Um, yeah. Uh, the the thing is, they got a prorated three million dollar bonus for Dalton or for uh, Green. Nothing for Dalton. Mm-hmm. You can cut Dalton, go away. Yeah. Right now. Well, and that was the cool thing about his contract. When they signed that contract extension, it was mm-hmm. like the Colin Kaepernick contract. Because a lot of people looked at the Colin Kaepernick contract years ago and said, "Oh my God, look at all this money." Yeah. yeah but they were they could get. In two years down the line, if they wanted to get out of it, they were out of that contract. That was it. Kind of like, like stars. Kind of like stars. Yeah, kind of like stars contract. Mm-hmm. If they you want to pull, they can. They can get out of it. It's mm-hmm. not going to cost them a fortune. So, can the problem once you look at a team like Cincinnati is they have so many needs. Mm-hmm. What value could you return to them? Right. This team's loaded with the receivers right now. So if you want to take Robert Foster and send it over to Cincinnati, I'm Ooh. sure they'd be happy. I'm sure they'd be happy to take Robert oh, Foster. Oh, you do have a lot of <clears throat> you do have a lot of guys that are on controllable contracts mm-hmm. that the Bengals wouldn't have to worry about. Right. However, I don't know if you're going to make that type of a move. If the Bills had made the playoffs last year, mm-hmm. I could see that move happening where you're trading a young guy and getting, "Oh, yeah, this is the one piece we need. This mm-hmm. is the one piece we need." The Bills aren't even one piece away. Right. So I don't think you would make that move, especially with only one year on his deal. With, yeah, no, this is the only year on his deal. This is the only yeah. year you'd have him, right? Guaranteed. Uh, and then he'd be thirty-one. I don't think his next contract is going to become with uh, like for the way that we think this offense will be next year. He's not going to have ninety catches if he comes over to the Bills, right? Well, I mean, you also have to look at from his perspective. Would a a you know would he want to come back to a third-year starter? Right, because that's what Allen would be. Is next year, would he be a third-year starter? Yeah. Is Allen? Does he see something in Allen that says, "No, I, I want to be with this kid to ride off into the sunset"? He might. Maybe. Who knows? I yeah, don't know. That's, but that's the advantage of going to get him is that it gives you the leg up to try and say, "Listen, you you see what's here, you know you yeah. you see you see the culture, you see the quarterback, you see the offense, you see the defense, you know what's here. So, you know, let let's just let's lock this thing down, but. I, I thought it was fascinating because Ryan Pangborn and Greg Tomset both pointed out um, on Twitter, Foster's not hasn't taken snaps with the starters in in OTAs. He's not taking snaps with one. He's the team's fourth receiver right now. Now, could that be because they're working the veteran guys, you know, a little more? I suppose so, right? This is not uncommon to what Foster did last season. Foster last year was taking snaps with the threes at the start of training hmm. camp. Um, Interesting. But Foster right now is is taking snaps as the team's fourth receiver, which, I mean, do the math, right? So if they do a four wide set, you're saying that he's he's the now fourth. he's in, right? Oh. But that's it. Which to me makes him expendable, right? You look at a guy with that contract with that much control, he carries a ton of value because you control him for the next two years. Mm-hmm. Even though he's only on a one year deal, you control him the next two years through the restricted free agent process, right? the value that he carries is very high. And if you're going to deal him, now is the time to deal him. So if you're ever going to trade Robert Foster, now is the time because of the contract and the value. I know people aren't going to want to hear it, but if you're going to say, you I'm know, just, like, I I'm want echoing AJ Green, the reaction right now. I know, so I'm but not. I'm just saying that if if you're saying I want AJ Green, you're going to have to end that sentence with and I'm okay with losing Robert Foster because that's going to be the trade-off. You're going to lose one. You're going to have to gain. The Cincinnati's going to need some help, and that's where they need help. You're going to lose A.J. Green. They've got Tyler Boyd, and that's it. They didn't even draft a wide receiver this year. So that, that's where they need the help. You're going to lose A.J. They're going to want somebody who they can control and try and develop if they're going to hit the reset button. It's Robert Foster, man. I hate to break it to you. No. No? You don't do that deal now? No, I don't. I don't. I got a different one. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, let's hear it. You know what I said at the onset of who he, his body type is very strongly resembling? David Sills? Yeah. You're saying trade Sills? Actually, he trades Sills and McLeod. Ah, oh, come on. Two That's... controllable deals. You said Sills and McLeod's fate. Sills, McLeod, and... Uh, McKenzie's fate. McKenzie's fate, fate yeah, are all, all intertwined. Yeah. They're all intertwined. And I, I believe that that holds a lot of water. Mm-hmm. Um so if you're sold on McKenzie, that's that's the guy you grab that you snag that you're going to have for a few years. He's, he's kind of your backup gadget guy. Mm-hmm. He can return kicks or whatever. If Roberts... The actress, I, Roberts yeah. looks like he's going to yeah. make the wrong. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But I'm just saying, it's always good to have that insurance policy. There's a reason sure. why you have more than one center on the team. You know what I mean? Right. You're going to have more than one returner on the team. So if you're sold on that and you think green, if you could swap green for Sills and McLeod, now I know that's insane, yeah. but... From the business aspect, you have two guys now because the free agent wide receivers next year, mm-hmm. under 30 look awful. Yeah. Well, that's they why That's why if a team is rebuilding, it's this is, again, the free mm. agent market becomes very, very stagnant, right? Mm-hmm. Because what has happened the last couple of years is that teams have extended guys. You know, they've they've taken those guys and they in the free agent market is, is a is not a great place to be no, right now. No, it's not. Um, and especially if they're looking at Jonah Williams is going to be out this season. They're moving Cordy Glenn back to left tackle, which means he needs some help at guard, which means... I you, We gave you, him help. We gave him guard. We gave him Mills. I Miller. know, right? We, we gave, gave, yeah, Miller. we gave him John Miller. Um, but I'm saying that if they're looking for help at guard, we have tons of offensive line talent that we could trade. That's, that's true, so, too. So, I mean, you, to them, you could lose A.J. Green and gain... Wyatt Teller and Robert Foster. Oh. It's going to cost the Bills nothing, Ooh. right? Because you don't lose anything with those contracts, so the trade doesn't cost you anything. Oh, God. You throw them a you fifth. You know how they are with their draft picks, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. You do You do Teller, Foster, and a fifth for A.J. Green for one year of A.J. Green. Oh. I mean. Oh, I don't know if oh, I don't know if I can do that. You know, good, big teams make big moves, right? You made two moves in Robert Foster and Wyatt Teller, and you you, you made an investment with those picks, right? Mm-hmm. However, you look at what they did this offseason, and what they did this offseason, I think, kind of is those moves are made to protect, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those moves are made to protect whether Foster or Teller work out, right? They, t- they signed a bunch of free agents, so whether Foster and Teller work out doesn't matter. Does this go back to your previous 6 and 10? They were here for a six and ten team, but they're not going to be here. for Yeah, I mean that argument. That argument still stands. All right. You know. No, because I'm just I'm just curious from the Bengals standpoint. Who goes first, Dalton or Green? Mm. If one goes, you got to assume the other one's going. I think it's I, almost like a dominoes. Like yeah. if Dalton leaves, if Dalton gets cut or traded, you got to assume that Green's gone because he he would rather play with a third year Josh Allen than a. Fifth year or fourth year, well, Jeff Driscoll. And again, you have a rookie. You have you have a young head coach. You have the excuse to hit the reset button. Exactly, and you can yeah. you can go into the off season if you get rid of Dalton and Green, which I know Bengals fans are just not even. Uh, no, no, no. They're going to be here for another forever, whatever. But the thing is, Mike Brown's there. He's been there since '91. He's their GM, and he's very. You talk about the Bills being stubborn with their draft picks. <clears throat> that's what he is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Dalton, conceivably, you said you could have gotten rid of him a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, for the sake of argument, you could have gotten rid of him. Green had more value two years ago than he does now. Absolutely. Uh, you could have traded him at 29 and gotten way hit the more. reset button two years ago. You, you know could what have I mean? got way more. You're starting to look in that division. Lamar Lamar Jackson's there. Baker Mayfield's there. Mm-hmm. Ben's not going to be there. you got to beat Pittsburgh to the table when going to get a quarterback next year. Yeah, but I think that's a case to, to keep Dalton this season, to keep Dalton and Green this season, because it's your last chance to swing and even make the playoffs. Yeah, but what's that going to – it's not going to benefit you to do that. You're in a rebuild. you got a first-year head coach. The, the formula that's been going on right now in the NFL is that you hit the reset button, you clear out cap space, you take a hit for one season, mm-hmm. you get a high draft pick, you have a lot of – um, free agents to get into your system. That's the reason why these guys flame out or they don't do well. They get fired after four or five years, even if they make it that they long. They try and keep what's there. Yeah, they try to say, okay, I could probably work with this guy. I could probably work with this guy. Instead of saying, listen, because those guys that go in there and they start at 8-8, eight 9-7, and 7-9, 8-8, eight eight, that's the reason why they don't get a high pick, they don't clear out at all and get guys into their system. 
That being said, you know, all right, we could take a three and thirteen season if we're going to be competitive for the next ten. Because that's that's the system, that's the blueprint I have laid out here. The Bengals are in that scenario; they can do that. Yeah, but, but you, it's the perfect time to not do that inside uh, that division. I don't dude. think so, man. Because Mason Rudolph is waiting in the wings in in Pittsburgh. No, I'm saying just from a standpoint of the other three teams in the division have gotten young quarterbacks. Yeah, have went out and drafted right young quarterbacks. Yeah. Now you're the last guy at the table before Ben gets done, and Pittsburgh does this before you. Because you got to think, if Pittsburgh, if the Ben goes down, Pittsburgh has an awful year, yeah. and then Cincinnati has an awful year, but Pittsburgh finishes ahead of you to get Jake Fromm, mm-hmm. you're going to be pissed off at yourself sure. for that. Sure. Instead of just going to do it now and not so much tanking, but... Well, so your, your de- view is that, that they keep him for another year. I, I'm just saying, I, I can see them playing out the last year of, of Green's deal with the way that the division looks. Okay. But... That doesn't mean that they won't listen, right? They would be smart to listen. And if you're going to hit the reset button and if you're going to move, you know, move away from Dalton, if you're going to do those things, right, um, you're going to depend on the run game, right, which is going to make Joe Mixon very valuable. It makes White Teller very valuable to your team because mm-hmm. White Teller is a, is a monster in the run scheme, right? And it makes Robert Foster important because you know that John Ross isn't going to work out, right? You just already know that it, that's gone. Yeah. So, um, you know, you take a look across the board. You're gonna you're gonna lose a six foot four AJ Green to a six foot two Robert Foster and gain guard help and gain and gain help in the run game. I think that's I think that's a move that you can conceivably make. But again, teams normally don't make moves until they at least have their quarterback targeted. And if this isn't a tank for Tua, like if you're gonna go, you got you're gonna be tank for Tua, and you're just you're pulling the plug right out of the bottom of the bathtub. You're like, we're just going to circle the drain here for a while. So you're going to have to cut more than just AJ Green and, and Andy Dalton. But if yeah. there was a market for Dalton, I would believe it. I don't oh, think yeah. there's a market for Dalton. I think there is a market for him. I really think that he's 32 years old. Um, he's not a terrible quarterback. Like He's not no. of the Blake Bortles mold, the Ryan Tannehill mold. Right. Which, by the way, is who Zach Taylor coached. And I looked up some interesting stats. For the first four years that they played in the NFL, only two quarterbacks have more passing yards than Ryan Tannehill. Peyton Manning and Dan Marino. In the first four years of their career, he had over 15,000 yards passing. Come on. Did Fox, I'm not joking. Did Fox Sports have I'm these not, stats? It we, wasn't Fox. We, we determined that Fox Sports stats are I'll, really questionable. I'll even, I still have it. Up on my computer at home. I will cut it and put it right here. I swear, I'm not. That's, I'm not losing my mind. I know I read it late last night, but, <laughs> but the, the the point is this: he's worked with a guy who wasn't even a quarterback, yeah, and made him, and and was mildly successful with him. He also has worked with wide receivers in L.A. that were nobodies and had them be successful. So that's why my argument of giving him Sills and McLeod outweighs the guard argument because. Hey, I got two young guys. Then they can make John Ross even a, a trade uh, partner. Give a trade partner for John Ross as well. Well, okay, let's do this because we're we're at a little bit of a stalemate here. Okay. Do I think that? Do I think that they're going to do anything? I don't think they're going to make any moves personally. Right. Okay. If they were going to do one, I don't necessarily think it includes the other. Right. I because you're going to just burn that fan base to the ground just you, for Andy Dalton to leave and Agent Green to leave and then you're stuck with Tyler Boyd and Jeff Driscoll that fan base is just going to lose their lose their collective minds Jeff Driscoll's entering his fourth NFL season okay. I mean and he start, he's played in two games so? his whole career he's got yeah. 31 QBR like it's just this is the, I'm, I, as much as I like Jeff Driscoll and I really do like Jeff Driscoll um, the, the, he plays a role in the NFL and starting for the Cincinnati Bengals shouldn't be it so I again Mark I'm under the understanding that they're just going to keep the boat going in the direction that it's going. The wheels are going to fall off this thing sooner or later. Um, and I don't think they're going to hold the head coach responsible for it. Um, you look at the contracts, some of them, a lot of them are going to cycle off these older players. So um, they're going to get to their bad season and it's going to be next year, not this season. So what what do you think? I do think this season is going to be awful. I think losing Jonah Williams... Um, you put Andy Dalton at risk. You're just going to lower his trade value if he plays this season. Right. Um, and then you got him for next year. You're going to have a 33-year-old Andy Dalton mm-hmm. starting 
for the second year for you as a young coach. You want to get your quarterback in there as right. fast as possible. Uh, A.J. Green, on the last year of his deal, the fact that the Bills earlier this year were get, had word of going after Brown. Right. So they're not they're not ashamed of going after a wide receiver in the AFC North. You know what I mean? Prior to them leaving. Now you got Odell Beckham now in the division. Yeah. You got uh, Jarvis Landry already came over in the division. You and you have Juju Smith Schuster who's going to have a nice like, big contract very soon. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Green he's almost been the forgotten guy there. He's been so productive for so many years. I think that the Bills because they made a move for Brown it's not out of the realm of possibility making a move for Green, and but you would have to give up, I think, two wide receivers because this guy was a receivers coach. He works with receivers. He they, he needs a return that way. Mm-hmm. And from the business standpoint, you're giving up a guy who is a great player. However, he he's not guaranteed to be there next year. Then you have two controllable contracts coming in with McLeod for two more years and Sills unrestricted free agent. Right. Well, and and restricted also, free agent, all those other guys. You're losing a guy like Green who missed a lot of time the last two years. He did. He did. Only four out of his eight seasons has he played all 16 games. Right. But the guy's had has over 600 catches. Sure. I mean, he's, yeah, he's a lot of positive. He will that. shift defensive coverages for your young quarterback. Right. Uh, I like the move from a personnel standpoint. I like it from a um, from from a schematic standpoint. Uh, and because the like I said, because the Bills have gone after a big fish before, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. But we'll have to see. I think if Dalton goes, Green's. Not too far behind. Oh, we'll see. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So, the Jonah Williams injury, how smart do the Bills look for taking Cody Ford now? (laughs) <laughs> right? As as guys start dropping off, yeah, the scale's starting to come oh, back up a little bit. He needed surgery. He needed surgery. Oh, gee. You didn't hear that one before. <laughs> Looking at you, Shaq. <laughs>